Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Um, so, again, if the systemic risk starts to raise its ugly head again, or if there's a trade, some trade concerns um, that start to flare up between the U.S., and China, and now Europe is finally starting to voice in a big way. They're concerned what China is doing on the trade side of the fence. Um, this is the pair we want to be on. Uh, we think we think um, we think this will crack very very fast. Um, the commodity currencies in here, but if we muddle through in here, the Europe main, the uh, the the U.S. maintains a modicum of demand and keeps the spigot open, uh, monetary spigot open, and says they want to do some work and even hints at quantitative easing by the Fed. Um, and as I said, a modicum of a man that can continue to take Chinese exports and, with, and tolerate um, a continuing trade deficit with China, then this relationship, um, uh, this trend will probably continue, and the commodity currencies will continue to move in a very, very big way um, against the U.S. dollar. Uh, we think we're getting close to a real judgment point here in the next in the next couple of months. So, I have to see how this plays out. Obviously, but this is the one we want to ride. The commodity currencies on risk. I throw this in here. This is just a chart from the Economist magazine, and this is the Big Mac index, which gives a kind of a down and dirty evaluation of over and under valuation against the U.S. dollar based on how much it costs to buy a Big Mac in a particular country. Um, just looking at the one at the top to show you how this works. Um, this is Norway. Um, here's the zero line. Um, this says that Norway right now is about 81% overvalued against the U.S. dollar on a fundamental basis based on the Big Mac index. And you can see that the euro area itself in here, 25%, more than 25% overvaluation, even though you, the euro has tanked so far what people th seemingly think is so far uh, against the U.S. dollars is another reason we think there's further to go. Now, if you look down the bottom of this, you'll notice um, you notice all these countries, Asian bloc countries. They don't have Singapore in here, but Singapore would be in here also. This is relative undervaluation against the U.S. dollar. This goes to the point of the the Asian bloc currencies have been suppressing their currencies for a long time in order to support their export model. We think that will change. This whole idea of global balancing will change. On a long-term basis, we want to be positioned in these currencies. Um, you know, again, it's sometimes hard to buy these and find out how to buy these. The Singapore dollar is one that's traded on spot forex. Um, it's hard to get access to some of the others. Obviously, China doesn't really move until they want it to move. But the Asian bloc currencies, you can see, extremely undervalued. And what are they most undervalued against? They're most undervalued against the European currencies. So, example, Thailand right now showing about 30% undervaluation. In Norway, 80% overvaluation. That's 110% fair value valuation between those two currencies. So our long-term play, um, and we just wanted to point this out, no matter what happens uh, in the world, and we think um, these valuations won't be squeezed out if China gets in trouble, but these, these valuations may widen. So if China gets in trouble, we would even want to add to the long-term play in these currencies. But just wanted to show you there's some other plays that you can do outside of just the dollar, thinking in dollar terms itself, and, and I think following the Big Mac index is a good way to see these. And uh, that's what I. Uh, that's it, Steve. Go ahead and take questions. I'll let you finish up. Yeah, Jack. Awesome presentation as always. Um, we have a couple questions. People were typing as you were uh, delivering your material. Uh, first of all, uh, Jack, would you would you mind commenting on your recent change of your uh, subscription and how can people find out more about that? I mean, sure. if that if your service is uh, for them. Sure. We just decided uh, we had offered a free newsletter, Currency Currents, um, and I've written it uh, every morning for about six and a half years. John Ross of late has come on board and, and helped out that process. Um, we're just watching what's going on in the market, and we really got tired of playing in that newsletter, you know, crowd. 
um, trying to compete with you know these newsletters that give these you know overvalued promotions and do this do that we, we just said we want to find people like ourselves and we were going to stop and, and content protect uh, our stuff and and only let our customers look at it and just not give away much free research these are the only things that we will give away for free in some of these uh, webinars uh, information that our clients see first but we just made that change, and, and we beefed up the newsletter in a very big way. We put a lot of effort into it. We spent a lot of money on research um, tools uh, to do that and, and other research outlets um, that goes into it. So we raised the prices, um, and we just hope um, people find value in it. We think, we think the value is there over the long run, but it's for the type of person that can appreciate um, you know, real life stuff, not uh, not hype, and and we just changed the business model. And part of that change too was we can't do much promotion anymore. We won't be doing because we started managing money, and we're managing money as a registered CTA. So it kind of all went together and changing the business structure. And if you go to our website at blackswantrading.com, um, you can learn all about the newsletter. We have all the details of what you get in there. It's not just the letter. There are a lot of other things, and weekly analysis, um, webinars that are all included. You know just member webinars only and, and things you know meetings and things like that so it's a lot more than just a newsletter so please if you have any interest go to the website you can find the details wow jack that sounds really exciting so good luck and uh i'm sure there'll be many people that are going to be interested in that kind of service as you said uh, obviously when you provide content you know you need to get paid for it and um, we just wish you the best a uh, couple you. other questions uh, expecting U.S. dollar growth. What can we expect from bonds, notes, and indexes in gold? I guess, uh, Jack, um, you are expecting more more growth in the U.S. relative to Europe. So, what do you think about bonds and uh, U.S. stocks and gold? Well, we think we think we're in a nasty deflationary um, pattern right now. Um, so, we think bonds in general will continue to do well. Um, Price-wise, and continue to hold up. <clears throat> you know, if anybody's watching these CPI numbers and and just the num you know all all around the world, not just the U.S., they're coming in under expectations. PPI falling outright uh, in some cases. This goes to a lot of the factors. Um, uh, you know, just under capacity growth, we think throughout the industrialized world economies, because of all this overhang of debt, we don't see it as inflationary, because of, because of this under capacity growth, we don't see the pricing power coming into the system because the system's not getting the money, getting the juice that's sitting uh, there in reserves. Ultimately, this wall of money, if we get a vibrant recovery, but we, we think it could be several years down the road, may cause an, a real inflationary problem. But until then, we think deflation uh, is in play. When we say the U.S. is going to grow faster than Europe, it's a very, very relative game here. <laughs> the U.S. is going to be very below capacity historically, but we think that with austerity settling over all the Eurozone countries, uh, their growth will plunge dramatically. Um, and because of that, the, just the U.S. even just tiptoeing along um, is going to look like a growth tiger compared to Europe. Um, so that's why we that's what we see the relative growth differential there. And in both cases, we see gov you know at least we see German bonds going higher. Um, the rest of the bonds over there are an absolute crapshoot. Um, you know, and you know, <laughs> it could collapse at, at any day if the wrong thing is said. I mean, if one of the policymakers powerful, you know, wakes up one morning in Germany and says, you know, this whole European experiment is a total mess and it's screwing up our financial system. It's time for us to leave. Uh, you'll see those yield spreads between Germany and Portugal, Spain, Italy, all those things all of a sudden just surge to where they should be, uh, where, where the market would value them. And we're probably looking at the 10% area <laughs> at least. So, so the bonds, you have to, you know, um, but we think German bonds, U.S. bonds, Japanese bonds, despite their, you know, continued massive, you know, debt to equity, debt to GDP ratios, uh, will be fine because of uh, deflation in general. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.